I know it's bright with the backlighting, but this is the portal that we just came in, and here we are in the mine. Good morning. Good morning, YouTube mine enthusiasts. Let's go exploring. Tom and Julie here. We're in a big mine today. It should be fun. It's a tungsten mine, and as Julie said, let's go. All right, let's see what we have in this one. Right off the bat, there's a a big timber that says three longs on it. Those look to be pretty old, don't they? Oh, right away there's an intersection too. There's some load counts on here. I'm going to take a quick peek in here. The load counts. Oh, that's a bat hanging there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let him wake up for a little bit. Okay. See him hanging there? Yeah. I did. You're good. You're just getting right <laughs> I, him. I thought it was. Go ahead. Here's a door. It's a steel door. We'll let that bat wake up for a while. So that's some kind of heavy duty security door, I'm guessing. All right, let's open it back up and uh, go in the mine. I'm sorry. Oh, a lot of wind coming through here. Oh, there's a heavy duty hanger, probably for ventilation and whatever else. That's a big heavy duty eye, about a half inch steel rod. Here's an intersection. Goes right, and it looks like the main line is left here. There's a big door over here. Let's go this way. Okay. okay, here we are coming up to this large door. Looks a little more modern. Wow, look at this handle. Big rope <laughs> handle, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Mm -hmm. A wide door. It's about a six or seven foot wide door. Oh, here's something right here. There's some bats over this way. What's this big deal? I don't know what this is. It's got some kind of a track on top. Here's an old shoot, round ore shoot made out of welded together 55 gallon barrels. There's some bats back here. I know Julie's not going to want to go back here, but I'm going to go take a look because it says the 203, I believe it's going to say raise. I just wanted to see if it's caved or not. Yeah, that's going to be caved because the bats are trapped in there. So we'll go back this way. I don't know where that other one went where that bat was hanging. It was a weird one then. I don't know what this deal is either. Here's the back side of this door. There's a bat. All right, let's go further into the mine. Here we're coming up to what looks like a chute maybe or some other type of a platform that was used for loading. This must have been a, a haulage way here. Oh, I feel cold air. Cold sulfur air. Yeah. Well, wow, very sulfury. So this is looking up into a stope that is connected with this huge loading chute here. Those are some big timbers. Oh, and there's a uh, there's a load counter. The old um, it's broken in half, but that's the old uh, cribbage board style load counter. They would have a peg in there, and they usually had 10, 10, um... This is 10, 20. Okay. It's numbered. Oh, so they're, num they're in 10s. They're, they're numbered. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So maybe we can go up here and look at this big stove here in a minute. And also, I feel air coming from my right, which is down this thing. And that doesn't look too bad. I think we can walk right down there. That might go to a lower level. But for now, let's continue on down the main line. What's your thermometer say? 
67. You see that? There it is. It was reflecting. Oh. Alright, let's keep going. See what else we find in this beast. This is a tungsten mine. Maybe we'll try our uh, fluorescent light for some shielite. I believe shielite fluoresces. There's several of these big cuts that go up into a stope up in there. They're every so often here, about every 20, 30, 40 feet, depending on spacing. And here's another one of these big chutes, or a big loading zone actually, up into a huge stope. And on my right here, it looks like there may have been a a um, slusher winch here because this has got some oil and grease on it you can see on the boards there so there was some kind of a machinery there probably probably pulling stuff out of the stoke there onto an ore car which would have been on the tracks where we're walking okay are we doing the right or left hand rule left hand I guess that's the way you're headed. Here's another one of these zones, loading zones with a a big flat chute and a very oily hoist or winch mount for a slusher probably. Here's a Vitalik butterfly valve box. Also some kerns. Apricot, pineapple nectar, and apricot nectar. Looks like uh, fruit juice. Fruit juice. Oh, here's some track. We're going to measure some track today just to see what we have. Looks like the upper one there further up is the easiest one to get to. Yeah. So we have one of our subscribers that is quite interested in the track sizes. So we're going to measure some. Okay, so the height of this track is two and three eighths. The height of the head is one half. The width of the head is one and an eighth. The width of the bottom is two and a quarter. And the, I forget what it's called, is one and a quarter. This web here and the, this hole is up looks like about an inch to the center of the hole from the base there's a there's a uh, chart that has all the different gauges on them and it's actually quite interesting all right moving on past that area looks like there are going to be several of these loading docks there's a hercules box Cardboard. High explosives. Other one here. Oh, yeah, part of an old wooden one. 7 Eleven this way. Oh, wow, that's quite steep. I think you'd need a rope to go down there. We do have ropes out in the Jeep we can go get. Another loader that goes up into the stope here. Looks like a little wind stopper. They removed all the track from this one. Well, it's a big drift, isn't it? Yeah. Where do you think a good spot to try fluorescing would be? I don't know. Maybe in one of these suit things. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, we're fluorescing. Look at how this orange fluorescent paint shows up. It's like it's hot, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of freaky. So we haven't seen a lot 
fluorescing. Oh, there's some blue. Is that she light? Snuff. Oh yeah, a snuff can, Copenhagen. I wonder if those had years on them, didn't they? I think you can tell the the year from the top style too. Has a date on it, but not a year. So here's another cribbage board style load counter. Those are always kind of neat. They might have had one at every station, or I don't know. This area is a little less stable. Got some ground fall. There's an old rain slicker. Wow. The guys will wear that when they would drill to keep themselves dry. That one's hard as a rock, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It can stand up on its own. But yep, that's an old rain slicker. And you would uh, keep the drill mud and water off yourself. There's an old Frito thing below it. What's that say? Fritos. Well, that looks like an older one anyway. Yeah. Is that a 70s style? I think it might be. Maybe. Another one of these ore drops, it looks like. And those are pretty steep. I don't think you'd get down there without a rope or get back up. You get down there. Moving on down the line. A little bigger area that's timbered. Must have been a little less stable. Oh yeah, speaking of less stable, look what's ahead of you. Oh, a little blowout on the track. I guess that's why the blocker was there for the uh, for the track. Wow, look at the size of that cavern. That's big. Yes, it is. I don't know how they ever got stuff out of there. Well, should we go across this or not? Sure. There's a rope over there. Want to climb a rope? No. Okay, Tom's going to cross over. Cross over to the unknown. Probably don't want to take the tracks. No. Okay, there's a spot I just came across. It's obviously blown out a little bit, but it's easily crossable. I didn't have to touch the tracks. Lou's gonna stay over there for a minute. I'm gonna go this way. Now we don't have anything to look at. Well, at least we found the end of the drift there. There it is. Okay, we've backtracked to the fork that went to the right where we went left, so we're going to take the one that we skipped here. It's a hard left. Looks like there might be a plug up here, although I see some room over the top of it. Boy, this is not a plug at all. You can stand right up and go over this thing. Those are deceiving sometimes. Oh, well, a good sized stoked room here with a whole bunch of timber in it. Looks like just spare parts. A little piece of ladder here, it looks like. Oh boy, there's a big stove. I don't know what 
that's all about over there. There's a little ladder. It's really tall. It's probably 40 feet tall up to there. Okay, we're going to go over this way a little bit off the drift into this stope. Let's see what's over here. Kind of hard to walk. Here's a piece of an old ladder. Bunch of track down there too. Looks like it's the same size track as that that we measured. Man, this is some big stuff in it. So we're still up above this huge cavernous stope. There's a cable anchor going into the wall with a uh, big hook or a big eyelet. This is above this huge cavern. It's got to be 100 feet across. And oh man, I don't know. From down there to the bottom, it's probably 50 feet tall. There's a bunch of track piled up in here. There's also a big post here that looked like it was an anchor for something, and boy has that been well used. I see some track picking up again over here, where Julia's. There's a track junction here, it looks like. Now here's the junction coming out of this thing we were in and then going forward. There's also something that goes this way. Let's go this way first. Another big open area. And a fence. A cyclone fence. six ladder that's gonna end up back in that big cavern that we just came out of looks like a can down there and a couple of drill steels or bolts let's go this way a little ways Tracks are still in here. There's another junction. You want to go right or left? Right. All right. This looks like it stops right here. Stops about 50 feet ahead of us, 75 feet ahead at a big pile. There's some uh, explosive paper. They would always wrap their dynamite in paper inside the box. There it says Palmer's Hole, whoever Palmer was. So this looks like a kind of a catch-all for stuff. There's uh, some beer cans. There's an old fuel or oil can. What does that say? Atlas. Okay, so Julie is showing off this Atlas Putter Company box. So, subsidiary of Tyler Corporation, Dallas, Texas. Here's a steel body with an aluminum pop top. Iris spring. No, Iris 
spring up, like seven up. I'm so used to saying Irish spring for the soap. Can you see the bottom of that? That's all steel, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a steel can with, a, with an aluminum top. Those are, I think, from the late 60s. Here's a thousand feet of debt cord, Primacord. Dangerous. And here's a 50 pound bag of Hercomex. Nitro carbonitrate. Usually you see antho, which is an antho is an ammonium nitrate mixed with fuel oil, what the antho stands for. Well, look what Julie found a blasting cap box from Hercules Electric Blasting Caps. Uh, lock these blasting caps, lock up these blasting caps. Springfield Cola. Throw them in that box there so we're just when we're done. Cream soda. Springfield cream soda. Some Pepsi. Show the top, please. Coke. Those are both pull tabs. Yeah. And then the old Pepsi six pack. Yeah. There's a couple more juice cans there. Yeah, great. There's a couple empty spools of Seminole. What is it? Shot firing wire and blasting cables. Yeah. And then an old pack of camels. There's some kind of bucket underneath here too. I can't see what it says. Though. What kinds of junk back here? If you like junk, there's most of a wood dynamite box. Is that Hercules? There's another piece to it. That's some on the other side, I think. It's Hercules, I think. Right? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's go back and see where that left goes with these at the end of these tracks right here. Julie found a six-foot piece of measuring tape, that uh, cloth tape. Usually the miners would have a fuse table that would have increments marked off so they could uh, make their fuses the correct length to time the, time the shot. Here are some papers we found. There's a long hole driller's report with nothing on it, just a blank form. And then it looks like these are drill hole locations. Is that what I'm seeing? Okay. Can you read any of that? Well, this is bottom holes minus 60 degree towards row 22. Uh, that's some technical deals with the drill holes. And then that's a protractor box, you said? Oh. Okay, we're back to this intersection where we went left into that area. This is kind of going around the top of that huge open cavern. That's to our right, so I imagine that's going to be showing up on our right here in just a few seconds, or not. There's a water pipe in here. Big hanger for stuff, pipes and ventilation tubes and stuff like that. Let's go. Let's go do this one though, in case we don't get back here again. That might loop around and a bunch of tra track ties stacked up here. Oh wow. We found a bigger area of this mine than I thought we were. Where does that go? Down. 925 stope. There's a piece of rope hanging on that thing.
Huh. Another junction. That's kind of jumbled up that way. Go yeah, go straight. Another piece of wood butt, dynamite box. Danger, keep out. Can't really see there's a ladder down there, but not not easily usable. It's nice temperature in here, isn't it? It was 67 when we came in, you said. Yeah. Hmm. Well, they used a fair amount of the old hemp rope, didn't they? Yeah. That looks like it stops right there. I don't know what this is doing. I might go that way. This stops right here as it go up. It's got an arrow pointing up. There's an old long neck. Holy crap. Who could climb that rope? <laughs> A monkey? Well, I climbed over that little pile that was in front of us, and this only goes about another 40 feet that way. Got quite a lot of loose material up here, very red, and this is the way I just came from. Billy's right over there. So not much here. Well, there's a ladder that goes down to somewhere there. Probably goes into that big cavern again, huh? Kind of the direction it's headed, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. It didn't look usable though. Are we taking the left? Okay, so we came from that way, and we're taking a left here. Here's a, uh... So this is a, is it a blasting cap? I think so. Looks like the same box that we just saw. These, the electric firing devices in this carton may be equipped with a shunt, which joins and short circuits the barrier wire tips adjacent to the installation. Lots of blasting cap boxes around here, cardboard ones. No tins, although we did find a tin top the other day from the California Cap Company. These things are hard to walk on. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Another end of a drift or a stope or whatever it is. Okay, now we're back to the main part. We're going to continue on the left here, the way we were going. Oh, grizzly. oh, big old grizzly. So that's a big set of grizzly bars there. And they're about, they're over a foot They'll allow a foot, foot and a half rock crew. So that's some pretty big stuff. Now, I'm guessing that goes down into that huge pit, which we haven't been down in yet. We've been going around it. So let's continue doing that. Go left. There's a lot of water pipe connectors laying around. Little bench. Yeah, somebody made a little bench to sit on here. Oh my buckets. Let's take a peek over here once. There's a milk carton or something. Lucerne. That's milk, isn't it? Yeah. MW down. What does that mean? Huh. 
I thought we'd be in that big cavern over here, but maybe we're past it now. I think we did too. I don't want to go down there. I just want to look for a second. It looks like you could get through down there, but I don't know. There's some big wood planking down there. Here's the mother load of wood dynamite box parts. Look at that. Look at all the dynamite box parts. Too bad they're also splintered up. Whole bunch of them down here. Over here too. There's some bigger pieces in some of them. All right, let's keep moving on down the line here. I see an arrow going right. That's the way we were going. So here's these big water pipe couplers and a big, um, that's for like a four inch pipe and a big rubber gasket. Big old mine, isn't it? to a timbered section here with some ground fall. Proceed with caution please. Let's see. Uh, looks like a little square set action up here. Haven't seen that here before yet. This is kind Another of a door. Huh. Yeah, another door all right. Wonder what if that's a Oh, there's your fuse table. It's got a piece of rubber hose for the handle. See, here's their fuse table. What's that big thing? What is that thing? So here's where the fuses got measured and the primers got crimped. There are usually marks in the wood here. Can you see marks in the wood? Mm. Measurement marks? Usually every foot. Mm, yeah. That's not, is it? Yeah. We're leaving the fuse station. Moving on down the line, see what else we can find. Newer parts of this mine were using uh, LHD vehicles, rubber tired, big load haul dump vehicles. This doesn't look like it's wide enough, plus it's still got, you can see where the track ties were. So this is an older part that was still using traditional ore cars, probably big ones. Uh, you know, bigger than the teeny old ones, because this is pretty wide. There's all the track ties stacked up right there. Oh wow. This goes for quite a ways here. Went a long ways there on the street shot with not much going on. It's like a flannel shirt. Well, all those uh, um, couplers for the water pipes, they sure left all those here. Looks like something happened here. 
catastrophe of some sort. That would have hurt. It goes through there, but I can see that it doesn't go through very far before it hits. Hits some sort of a um, drop over there. I can see it from here. I'm not sure, sure if you can see it on the camera or not, but this is pretty unstable. I don't even like standing right here, so I'm going to leave before I get slab crushed. All right, that's the end of that long. Here's a little cross cut. We backtracked past the fuse room. There's a blocker up here. They don't want you to go head first on this one, I guess. Oh boy, there's a ladder again. Looks like the ladder to nowhere, hanging on by a little old wire. No thank you. Mullane Williams, hold through, I think it says, 1954. Whatever that means. Maybe he made the hole there, I guess. Anyway, well, I'm not going down there. You? No thank you. I don't remember if we looked this way or not. This looks like a big stove. Oh, is this the big? Yeah, this is the big cavern. Yep. There's a ladder over there. Man, look at the size of this room. It's got to be a hundred feet from over there. To over here. And then from up here to the very bottom down there is what about? Oh man, that's got to be, that's most of a hundred feet too. This is like a hundred by a hundred. It's crazy. Okay, Julie went around and is on the other side over there. Pretty big, huh? Yeah. Shine up to your right on the wall behind you. So you can see Julie's light on the wall behind her there. That's pretty cool. Okay. Now maybe shine over this way somewhere. Well, it gives you some idea. It's hard to depict just how big these are, but... There's a little ladder over there. I'm up on one of these platforms. These are like a loading chute. There'd be an ore car kind of right where Julie is, a little closer, but somewhere in that area. And they probably had a slusher that was pulling stuff out of here. So I'm going up into a stope now. These are huge stoves. Big pillars left behind to stabilize the, the back of the stove. Well, you wouldn't want to be here when some of this stuff slabs off either. You'd be dead instantly. Because all of this stuff has come down from like right there. So I'm going to get out of here again because this does not seem real safe. Okay, that's that loading zone I was just in, the loading dock. Just across it there's this... I don't know what it is. There was track in here at one time it looks like.
It's not as steep as some of the other park passes we've seen. All right, we're geared up with our harnesses. We have our rope tied on to a big post. And when you go down this thing, it's not really vertical just yet. We just don't know what happens further down. So let's go down this way and we're going to be protected with the rope. Okay, we are starting to make our way down this. I don't know what it is. But Julie's up there coming down. Okay. So this is what's ahead of us. It's a little steeper, that's why we roped up. All right, here comes Julie down the, the slope. There she is. We caught off a rope because it got flattened out a little bit, but now it gets steeper again. We might have to go back and re rig. We come to some pretty big stopes. Some of this is slabbed off too, right here. That's a little unsettling. I hope that glove isn't still hooked onto a guy's arm underneath there. Yeah? No. Glove right here? No. I'm kind of joking. Yeah. So, this is where it goes now. It's not terribly steep, what you can see, but I don't know what happens after that. But we're at the end of our rope, so we're 200 feet down. So no use in being on the rope anymore since it's at the end. We have a couple more out in the Jeep, but we didn't bring them. I didn't think it would be more than 200 feet down. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to go that way. There's a big straight drop right there. So don't go that way. We're going this way. Some interesting colors there. All right, so we've come to a big timbered area. I don't know if it's another level or if we're on, um, we look like we're in the top of some square sets. There's a dynamite box wedged in there. It looks like an old one, doesn't it? So this is what we have here. I don't know exactly what do we have. We're kind of up in the top of these square sets. Should we try and get a little lower? Yeah. 